So, my name's Ryan. I screen print. Uh, my name is Brett. I am friends with Ryan. So, we both we came from the music industry. Uh, he was way better. So, I started my business in 2004. You started yours in 2010. So, coming from music, you are in the merch, like merch and music go right together. We kind of took the supply route, helping you know people get started in screen printing and growing your screen print business. Everything from like now even software to you know equipment, supplies, and T-shirts. And then this guy went the other route. Yeah, but whenever you know, I kind of realized we weren't going to be the Rolling Stones. Uh, kind of threw in the towel on playing music, and but I knew the industry and I knew who to sell t-shirts to, and I knew the bands buy a lot of t-shirts, and I knew why. And so I decided to start a business printing t-shirts, and I had a lot of friends that were in bands, and so that was easy to find customers. And uh, you know, we grew and made a lot of mistakes and had a lot of struggles, and I feel pretty passionately about education. So several years ago, I started teaching classes for Ryan, at, and then Ryan and I came together and started teaching a lot of classes at trade shows because I just really want to help people, and I want to see people succeed, and certainly want to educate people based on the mistakes that I've made and how I've learned from them. You go first. So focus in, you know, really come up with your niche or really focus in on what you want to do and who you want to be in five years. It's like that. The question you have in every job interview is like, where do you see yourself in five years? It's really important to have that vision for your business as well. You don't have to be a giant print shop to be successful. You could have one auto and be super successful. You could have one manual press and be super successful. And so kind of deciding what you want to be, who you want to be. There, you could be the best print shop in the world. You could be the print shop that makes the most money, or you could be the biggest print shop. Those are all three completely separate, different things. So decide which track you want to go down. And I would say don't try to cut quarters. It's so easy. Don't skimp, don't cut quarters. It's so easy as you're starting out and be like, oh, I'm just going to do this, but I'm going to do it like half-ass. You know, if you can invest Invest, invest in yourself, invest in your people, invest in your operation, which is your systems and your gear. You know, and if you can do that, every time you come to a road, there's a there's an easy. Like when we were building the all made shirt, it's new business, never done it before. We come to a road. What kind of fiber should we use? We could go cheap. Everyone's trying to sell us on cheap because we're in a commoditized industry. Or we could go more expensive. It's gonna be hard to sell something more expensive. If you can make the better decision for the future, not just like the easy way out right now, then you'll get to the future much better. So that's what I say. I see people trying to cut quarters all the time. Those who don't are way better off. Some Sometimes the other guys don't even make it down the road, but if the ones are down the road, they're further along, guaranteed. Okay. So All Made, initially we're gonna try to do it ourselves because we, you know, can, you know, screen print you know, have screen print supply warehouses, but just the footprint, the location, the inventory needs, getting shirts out on time, right, is a lot different. You know, you can't put a barcode on a shirt. Uh, it's got to be packed right, shipped on time. Sometimes you got to ship a thousand of them, ten thousand of them. Sometimes you got to ship three. Uh, and we just want to have a great partner that can help us do that. Allow us to focus on making a great shirt and. Ex, you know, getting more people to uh, experience it. What can we expect it? Come on, distributors! Like, they're lining up right here. Like, I don't know. We gotta pick the right partner. Mm -hmm. So, our goal is to have something by the mid, mid year. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Okay, so if your goal is to um, print shirts for a lot of people, or print, I mean, if you're just like a craft shop and you're that hand pool feel and that's what you want to do, that is totally cool. But if you want to grow the efficiency of your business because you're only one person and you only have so much time, stepping up to an automatic is like a no-brainer. It doesn't cost that much money, it's cheaper than hiring another person, and then you know, even as a one-person print shop, right, you could be printing shirts 
for two hours in the day and it's more shirts than you would have printed all day long on a manual and now you have time to go sell you have time to write invoices you have time to do all the other things that need to be done so you know, i have this conversation a lot with people at the show here and there's three ways to automate so uh first is buy buy something used um which is the way a lot of people get into it because of the price point. When you're getting something used, you're gonna spend $8,000 to $20,000. It may work great, it may not work great, but you're not gonna be able to, to go, you might be able to take one or two steps forward, um, but maybe that's another stop. You're stuck right now because you're in a manual shop. So if you buy something, again, that allows you to take one step, when you're taking that step, now you're stuck. You know, second is people buy entry level equipment, which is could be used or new. Uh, but again, maybe one step, one and a half steps down the road, and then you have to do it again. Then there's pro level equipment, which costs more than oh, I can't afford it. But really, that allows you to go four steps down the road. So if you can't, if, if you're gonna invest in something, try to invest in the best solution long term, not just now. And if you're gonna buy used, buy a pro use press. Uh, that's in better shape, spend, again, spend a little bit more money versus an entry level use press or a, uh, a press. If you get servo heads, it's a huge thing to have an automatic press, and it gives you so much pain down the road. <laughs> this is. This is an interesting one because it's so core values and core values have them, talk about them, integrate them into your business and hire off them, fire off them. And when you set that line in the sand, people start to understand that that's how things work and you start to attract a tribe that actually is there. And it's it's not perfect. You made a lot of mistakes and that's uh, like a person mistake is a hard mistake to make because it's every single second, every single day, and it's money. I think you have to give them something to live for, right? Like when you're hiring people, you want to make sure that you're certainly that your values align, that you're working towards the same goal, and give them something to be really excited about, or they're not going to be excited. And that's going to be different for every business. Our company has a culture of people that really enjoy being with each other. We hang out all the time. It, we might have a really long day of work, but we still grab beers together afterwards. You know, because we genuinely like each other. And if you can have those kind of like offline relationships, um, then we care about each other during the workday too. One of our core va values is be thoughtful, which not only means be thinking all the time, but certainly be thinking of the people around you. And uh, if we can do good things for the people around us, they're gonna be more invested in what you're doing. And treat your people well, pay them, pay them good, and uh, make sure to continue to communicate with them. We're, just all, we're all just people. And, you know, as long as we have that communication, we're going to understand that, you know, the boss or the owner does not want to be an asshole and the employee does not want to be a shithead. And that's not what either of us wants to wake up each day for. But a lot of times we get stuck in those corners and it's not really how it's supposed to be. So all we have to do is talk about it. I would say a big, a big mistake that I see shops making, and certainly a big mistake that I feel like I made, is trying to grow too fast. Um, you know, it takes a lot of cash to grow fast, and it also opens you up or makes you susceptible to huge mistakes. Um, if you don't really clearly write down your processes, and you know, you got to build. You gotta build a house from the foundation up, right? If you start trying to reach for the stars and, and get giant customers and you really don't know how to service them or take care of them or, or print the service that they need, you're gonna screw up, you're gonna stumble, you're gonna make really costly mistakes that will end up putting you out of business. Systems, you know, some of the things we've covered already, you know, not investing in the right place and not investing in yourself, I think is generally probably the biggest 
uh, not investing is a huge mistake, um, trying to cut quarters, but uh, putting in systems, and a part of that's processes, but another part of it is investing in a system that runs your business. There's, and it's hard to find in this industry. A lot of times you have to dig it for, you know, put a couple of systems together, you know, web system and a shop management system together. So when you can find a system that allows you to run your business, that's huge. Cleanliness and organization. One number one thing. It's clean is good. Yeah. You know, clean. And then other thing too is when you're getting a, a tour and the owner like walks by people like this, and that's he's standing right there printing. It's you know you're like oh hey Brad what's going on? And Brad's like oh hey Ryan you know like you can tell there's it's a good place to work you know versus like somebody that literally treats their people like animals and. And, the sh and you see the sh crap coming off the press. Because you treat somebody like crap and they're going to put crap out. Yeah, when you see people smiling, that's usually a good sign. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Charge more. Raise your price. Yeah, if we can actually lift the price up in the industry, then we all win. If we stop undercutting our, cutting each other, then, you know, we started doing that with stream printing equipment. We started selling equipment for more. And now other people sell stream printing equipment, for more, you know. Uh, and don't be scared of that. I wouldn't be scared to, to, to raise your price a little bit and make a product worth paying for. <laughs> that, that lasts a long time, you know. Do time studies, figure out how long it actually takes you to print jobs, how long it takes you to set up screens, scrape screens, clean screens, figure out how long it actually takes to do your job, and then figure out how much it costs you to run your business per hour. And then do a little bit of math and figure out how much you need to sell your t-shirts for and able to stay in business. See, a lot of people go out of business because they undercut their neighbor. Know your, know your revenue per team member. You know, if you have 10 team members and you're doing a million dollars a year and you're making $50,000 profit, your revenue per team member is 100 grand, okay? If you hire two more people, what do you need to be doing in revenue? 1.2. A lot of people will hire two point people and not do any more revenue. Now you just, you're gonna pay that person more than 50 grand a year. Your profit's gone, you know? And that's a very easy metric to measure. You do it off your budget and you do it at, on, on a monthly p and and reconcile it. Uh, know your revenue per team member and that your team members, I was just at Zappos actually, we were pitching all majors to Zappos. Their entire company is on revenue per team member. If you're not pulling in, it's 200K, 200K. They're not pulling in 200K, they're not adding 200K of value, they're, they don't have a job. It doesn't mean they get fired, it just means that job is worthless, or they're worthless in that job. They need to move to another job that adds more value, or leave. So, I like the concept of going out and searching out clients that you really want to work with. Um, if you see a, a company that th you think is really cool and you want to work with them, start sending them gifts. Like, send them, send them some of your own merch or send them ideas of what you think you could do for their brand to make their brand better. Send them a bottle of wine. Send them, put it on the table. Send them cool stuff. And then, you know, maybe they'll start paying attention to you. Uh, we'll, we are actually doing a marketing class on Sunday. And I have a friend that owns a company called Music Bed, and he was trying to get the attention of very specific people in the uh, video industry and ad, ad agencies and art directors, and he would actually uh, buy billboards or buy signage on their subway station stops or outside their offices to get their attention. You know? For one person. For one person. But if you can get someone's attention, and get them to talk to you, then go tell them your story and how you can make their brand better. Yeah, I think uh, going out and seeing your customers is, and, and understanding that like there's this industry is so competitive on the supply side, on the equipment side, on the t-shirt side, that no one needs anyone, you know? Brett could go away, Ryan could go away, All May could go away, and everyone would go around printing t-shirts, no problem. We're getting t-shirts printed, no problem. So realize that our customers, we gotta serve them first.
screen department. There is never enough screens. Uh, there's never enough screens staged. There's screens aren't ready to go for the next day. There's never enough screens cleaned and ready to be coded. There's never enough screens coded. You know, there's not enough screens imaged. So, if your screens don't, if your press doesn't have screens, you're screwed. Right. I mean, I, I see it. I see it in our shop. I see it in sh shops that I go into. They don't have things ready for production tomorrow because of screens. I follow him. There's a YouTube channel called Ryonet. It's amazing. There's a guy with spiky hair. He does a bunch of videos. There's these classes in Texas <laughs> called From Printed Threads. There's, I don't know, I, I think finding, hooking up with shops that you want to be like, that print with you, and offering them value, serving them, figuring out how you can add, alleviate them, I'll come help you out for a week. That's how I learned how to sell and how to internet market, you know? So, there's so much information out there, sure, you can Google it, you can do all that, but if you can find a personal connection with a mentor that is who you want to be, and you can offer them value, they'll, they'll teach you for free. Yeah, I've, coming to trade shows like this is so huge because you get to meet other printers and, or even meet your vendors. You know, we we can go walk around uh, the trade show floor and meet the emulsion manufacturers and the ink manufacturers, and those guys know what they're talking about. There's scientists, chemists. You know, they they know what is inside that product and they can help you print it better. And then you can bump into you know people in the industry that have done really cool things and made really cool prints and ask them, how do you do it?